Hello everyone, this is Ben, and today we're going to look at the basic functionality of V-Ray for Revit, as well as going through the process of setting up and rendering a scene. V-Ray for Revit was designed with architects and designers in mind. Essentially everything you need is located right here in this ribbon. Now let's examine each of these buttons in greater detail. Current view. Current view is where you select which view you would like to render. Next we have the render button. Here you can start your rendering or send an export to start rendering using one of three options. You can either use Render with V-Ray, which uses our standard production engine, Render V-Ray RT, which uses our real-time rendering engine. This engine will actually use either your CPU or your CUDA-enabled GPU. And finally, there's Export VR Scene. This allows you to export your scene as a file which can be opened in an external application such as V-Ray Cloud or V-Ray Standalone. Next we have the Show Hide Frame Buffer button. This shows and hides the V-Ray frame buffer, which is the V-Ray rendering window. Quality, here you can select from a range of presets which go from draft, which is fast, yet very low quality, to very high, which is slower, yet best quality. Resolution, here you can either use one of our presets, type in your own custom resolution, or use your view's crop region by using the crop box option. Up next we have the lighting section. Here you can easily enable and disable your artificial lights. And you can change your environment light by using either the V-Ray Sun, which gets its location from the Revit Sun in your camera scene. You can use the V-Ray Dome Light, which lights your scene either by using a solid color or by using an image. Or you can disable the environment light altogether. Next up is the V-Ray Material Browser. The first tab in the Material Browser is the Material Map tab. Now by default, V-Ray for Revit reads all of your Autodesk materials. But if you'd like to use your own V-Ray materials, you can load them in using our standard VR mat file format. The next tab is the Override Materials tab. Here you can override all your opaque and transparent materials by either generating your own simple material or using a predefined VR mat file. Under Camera Settings, you can easily adjust exposure. You can enable Depth of Field for more advanced users. Or if you enable both options under stereoscopic rendering, you'll have an image ready for VR. And finally, we have the V-Ray Global Settings. I'd like to go over a few settings which are important to users who are just starting out. The first of which are under the Paths tab. Here you can set the material paths, which are folders that contain VR mat files you are using, and IES Light Paths, which is where you list your folders that contain all your IES files. Next, we have the Share tab. This is where you can easily import and export settings to be used with other users or with other projects. And finally, we have the Objects tab. Here you can set an infinite ground plane at a specified height. And with that, let's go through the process of rendering an image using V-Ray for Revit. What I have open right now is the basic sample scene that comes with Revit. What I'd like to do is render this living room view, but as you can see, the V-Ray toolbar is grayed out. This is a limitation put on us by the Revit API at the moment. So what I'm going to do is switch to another view. It can be any view as long as it's not a camera view. And once I've done that, I'm going to select the view I'd like to render, the living room view. I'm going to select the quality I'd like. Let's go with draft for now. And then I'm going to set the resolution. I'm going to go with a very small resolution to start out. Everything looks good. Exposure's fine. I'm going to go ahead and start an RT rendering. Now this is a real-time rendering, and this is going to allow me to fine-tune some settings before I'm ready to produce my final rendering. So as you can see, this has already started rendering. So I'd like to get some more sun into this view, so I'd like to change the angle of the sun. So what I'm going to do is switch back to the living room view, and I'm going to edit my rendering settings. Here I can adjust the date and time to get to the kind of lighting situation that I'm looking for. As you can see, as I make these adjustments, it's adjusting in real time both in the Revit window and in the V-Ray RT window. This is the biggest advantage of V-Ray RT. Okay, I think this looks good. My next step is to adjust the exposure since it's looking a little dark. So to do that, I switch back to a non-camera view. I select my exposure control and start playing with the settings. 
Switching it to 11 was a little much. I think I'll go with 13. That's good. Okay, now that I have my sun and exposure settings where I want them, I'm going to go ahead and stop this rendering. Now before I move on, I'd like to point out the V-Rave render finished window. This allows you to either save the image as a file or save it to the project. But since this is just a draft rendering, we're going to close this for now. Now to get ready for the final rendering, we just need to change a couple settings. We're going to change the quality to something higher. Let's go with high. And let's change the resolution to something a little bit better. Now all that's left is to hit render. Now this time I'm going to use the production render, which is the regular render with V-Ray button. This is the best option to use for producing final results with less noise. Now when using the production renderer on any setting other than draft, V-Ray goes through two quick pre-passes before going through the final pass. The first one is called the light cache, and the second one is called the irradiance map. Now that the two pre-passes are done, the final rendering is started. At this point, I'd like to fine-tune some of the exposure settings. Now I can actually do this while the rendering is going. If you select the button on the bottom left corner of the frame buffer, it exposes a selection of post-processing tools that you can use while it's rendering or after it's stopped. I think this rendering is pretty good, so I'm going to go ahead and stop it here. At this point, the V-Ray Render Finish dialog pops back up. I'm going to go ahead and save this straight to the project. And that's it. We now have a V-Ray rendering stored in the project and ready to go.